Let's try to understand the adder and accumulator classes in Java 8 using an example. Let's say we want to write a code where we are submitting and executing a lot of tasks and we want to keep a count of all the tasks running based on the processing that they do. So here we have one such task which implements runnable and in the run method based on some processing it will increment this counter. This counter is not its own. This is the counter which it takes using the constructor and it is passed to it in this main method a common counter of type atomic long is passed to all the tasks right and these tasks are executed on this fixed thread pool this executive service with 16 threads that means you on these 16 threads there will be 100 tasks running all of them will be incrementing this single counter and once all the tasks are completed then we'll print out the value of this counter. To wait for all the tasks to be completed, we are using thread.sleep, but that's not the right way to do it. We also need atomic long instead of just using long. That is because this value will be incremented by multiple threads. Whenever a variable is used, incremented or updated using multiple threads, you need it to be thread safe. And for long values to be thread safe, Java provides a facility of atomic long where you can have it as thread safe. Internally, atomic long could operate something similar to this. Let's say thread 1 is running on core 1 of the CPU and thread 2 is running on core 2. Both of these cores will have their local caches. So let's say initially the core 1 uh, increments the value of a counter by 1. So initially the counter value was 0, now it's incremented by 1. So counter value is 1. If the thread 2 intends to increment the value of counter, it needs to know the updated value of counter, right? Because in its local cache, it's possible that it still has the older value of counter, which is 0. And that is why there has to be a flushing of this counter from the local cache of first core into the shared cache, and it has to be pushed into the local cache of this core 2. And that is the synchronization that has to be done because all the threads on all the cores are operating on the single counter. And this leads to a lot of contention. So if your tasks are updating the value of this atomic long a lot, there are a lot of write operations, there is going to be contention. And that's why this updation will be slower because there has to be synchronization. Now let's replace that atomic long with this class called long adder. So most of the code remains as is. We just initialize the long adder instead of atomic long. We increment it using this increment method. And then in the end, instead of doing a get, we are doing counter.sum. The rest of the code remains as is. Internally, long adder works a little differently than atomic long. Each thread will have a separate variable for incrementing its own counter. So here, thread one has this variable called counter dash so this is not the counter variable this is a counter dash variable similarly thread 2 will have its own variable let's say the variable name is counter dash dash each of these threads will increment its own variables it will not increment a common counter variable they will increment their own variables so thread 1 will always increment counter dash and thread 2 will always increment counter dash dash and since both these threads are updating their own variables, there is no contention for increment operations. So both of them without synchronization, without having to flush it into shared cache, can keep on incrementing their values. Again, going back to the code, we are incrementing it here. So each thread will have a thread local variable incrementing. But in the end, we want to be able to have some of all the increments done. And that is the only time there has to be synchronization across multiple threads. So when you call the sum method in long adder, it is going to get all these variables of each of the threads and perform the sum operation. If you expand this or make it more general, we, so here we have eight threads and all these eight threads will have their own counter variables within them and they will increment their own variables. And only when you call the sum operations, will there be synchronization across all these threads and all the copies of these variables will be added to get the final value of the sum. And that is why 
the throughput of long adder is much better than atomic long because in atomic long every increment operation had to be synchronized here increment operations has no contention but only the final sum operation has some contention and has to be synchronized accumulator is very similar to adder it is almost like a generic version of adder so let's say we have the same code as before but instead of adder we initialize the counter of type accumulator accumulator takes two variables the first one is the lambda it's a function where you take two parameters x and y and you perform any operation on them we are performing a addition operation the value on the left is the intermediate value and value of y is the new value that you want to perform the initial value is zero that is the second parameter and the rest of the code remains very similar so instead of increment we have counter dot accumulate and we can pass in the value of one here because we are adding a counter of one and in the end instead of sum we are doing counter dot get the way this x and y works is if you pass one onto it here the value of x will be initial value so it will be zero and the value of y is whatever you have passed here so where the value of y will be one and the addition will be zero plus one which will be one next time someone calls the counter again passes one here the value of x will be one based on the previous result which was one and you're passing this one value which is assigned to y so the addition will be one plus one which will be two and so on and so forth so the next time you again pass in one the value of x will be two and y will be one so two plus one is three so it's a general increment operation very similar to what we did in adder but the beauty of this class is you need not just limit that to an addition operation you can apply any operation that you could apply on two variables so you could multiply them so you can keep multiplying all the counters and have the result or you can perform any other operations like math.minimum or math.maximum this is a typo this should have been math.max so basically accumulator works like adder but instead of addition it can take custom functions so we have some caveats in how we can use this accumulator and that is mainly because how it works internally the most important thing to remember about accumulating function is that it should not have any side effects so it should not have its own state it should not change any external variables that is because internally according to the specification of accumulator class that function can be called repeatedly so if you have any state or if you are making any changes to external variables those can be applied multiple times leading to corrupt data and that is why it should be a neutral value a stateless function performing the operations also for both adder and accumulator we have seen that there is no contention for increment decrement operations so it is best suited for write heavy operations where you are doing a lot of increment decrements but very few of the sum operations the final operations and last but not the least the order of these operations is not de deterministic as per the specification so since there are multiple threads all are incrementing it simultaneously there is no guarantee of which one will be called first so when you are calling the sum operation it is possible that it applies that operation to the first thread then to the third thread and then to the second thread that's it then that's all there is to long adders and long accumulators so whenever you want to increment or perform any simple operations numerical operations and but those operations are to be done across multiple threads instead of choosing atomic long you can also think about using long adder and if you have any custom functions you can think about choosing accumulator thanks a lot for listening see you in the next one